Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter video tutorial. My name is Tensor. Originally, I was not going to do a follow-up to the last tutorial. In case you haven't seen it, in the last tutorial, we built out a calculator layout, and our calculator layout has no logic in it to actually make it work. In this tutorial, we are going to implement the back end so that a majority of the features for our calculator will work properly. I thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at some of the features of the Dart programming language that we haven't really touched on in this tutorial, as well as look at things like refactoring a Flutter application and passing around functions as state inside of a Flutter application. All right, so let's get started. If you have not seen the last tutorial video, I recommend you go and take a look at it, or at the very least, go into the GitHub repository and get the code. This is currently what our calculator app looks like. You can see we have all of our buttons here. We can push the buttons, but nothing happens. Our display has a static string in it. We can change that string by simply entering in a new value for the input string here. So to add state to this application, we want to implement an inherited widget, and we also want to refactor our state widget so that we have a stateless widget for our layout. So right here above our calculator class, I'm going to make a class called calculator layout, and it will extend the stateless widget. And we'll take the entire build function for our calc state class and cut it and then paste it into this calculator layout class. We also want to grab the make buttons function so that we can properly generate the buttons inside of our other class. So just cut that and paste it into the calculator layout class. Now after pasting everything into this class, you'll notice that the input string is now throwing an error and that's because we have no global variable called input string that is feeding input into this layout. Also you'll notice that the calc state class will also be throwing an error because it has no build function. To correct this, we want to create an inherited widget called main state. Inside of this inherited widget, we want to create a constructor put in the key and then we'll add input value, previous value, value, op, and on pressed. And of course we also need the widget which will be the child and we'll put the key and the child in our superclass. Also we need to add these values into the main body of this inherited widget. Input value will be our string and this will be the input value that we already have. So this is our display string. Then we have previous value. This will be basically a go between that will allow us to save the first value that the user types into the calculator. And this will be a double because there's no point inside of our application where we're going to be taking the previous value and displaying it as a string. The next variable called value will be the next go between. And this will be the value for the second number that the user enters into the calculator. We want this to be a string. And then we have OP, which stands for operator. And of course our operators are characters, so we want this to be a string. We're gonna be using this to hold the operator tokens that we were passing through our buttons. And finally, we need to have a function called onPressed. And this will be the function that we'll use to resolve our button presses inside of our layout. We want to add previous value, value, and op into our calc state class. And we'll take our input string here. We'll remove this string. We'll make it into an empty string. We'll do the same thing for value. And then for operation, we'll put a z in here. And I'll go over why we're doing that when we get to the logic. With our inherited widget, we want to go ahead and override the update should notified function. And this function is the function that gets called every single time the application wants to know if it needs to re-render this widget. We want to re-render our widget every single time our input value or our display value changes. So every single time the user enters in a key or a value, we want to be able to change the state of our application so that it will show up inside of our calculator. We also want to add an of method so that we can get the instance of this class inside of any of our other classes. And of course this needs to be static. And all we're really doing is calling context inherit from widget of exact type and then we pass in our main state. 
So essentially every single time our main state changes state, it will then replace the old instance with this new instance. All right, so that's all we need to do for our inherited widget. Now we want to go up into our calculator layout class and into the build function and instantiate our main state object. We can do this by calling our of method on main state. Now we can come down into our text field here where the input string is and we can put in main state dot input value. If it's null, then just return zero. All right, so now to wire all of this up, we need to remake our build function inside of our calc state class. And this build function will be where our main state widget comes into the widget tree. And of course, we need to put in the values that we want to pass into our inherited widget. And that is our input value, which is our input string, our previous value, which is our previous value, the value, which is value, and the operation. And then for our unpressed, for now, we'll just pass in an anonymous function. And then the child of this particular widget will be our calculator layout. We can go ahead and build out the calculator now. And you can see that now our layout comes out except the only real difference is that we have no display string inside of our display currently. We can still push all the buttons and of course this does nothing and that's because we haven't added the logic quite yet. Let's get started building the logic to make this calculator work. Most of our logic is going to take place inside of our calc state class. We want to have a function that will return a boolean and check to see if a string is a number. We'll check to see if the string is null. If it's null, we'll return false. Otherwise, we'll take our string, we'll call double parse on it, and if it comes back with an item that returns an error, it will return null, in which case it will then throw back false. If it comes back with a number that can actually be parsed, that number will not be equal to null. So it will then let us continue and it will return true. But with this helper function, now we can build out our onPressed function. This function takes in the key value, so the actual piece of text that resides on the key itself. And we're going to run that key value through a switch statement. And for the various cases of the value, we'll be able to do different things. Here are the various cases that we run through with our key value. If we look at our keyboard, you can see that all of these are the special buttons that we have on this keyboard. For our clear case, we want to just zero everything out. So we take our operator value and we set it equal to null. Then we take the previous value, we set it equal to 0, 0.0. We take our value, we set it equal to an empty string. And then we want to call the set state function so that the widget tree will know to update and we'll take our input string and set it equal to an empty string as well. After this case finishes, we want to call break so it doesn't run through the other cases. For this particular application, we're not going to implement the decimal. We're also not going to implement percentage backspace or the positive and negative button. So to skip all of these cases, we just take all of the cases and afterwards we put in a break statement. We also want to group together our multiplication, our addition, our subtraction, and our division. So with the Windows calculator, you put in numbers, then you click on the operator that you want to use. So let's say multiply, and then you put in more numbers. And then you click the equal sign and only after you click the equal sign does it actually apply the operator to the two sets of numbers. So what we need is a go between to hold on to the operator so that we can then get the second number. So that's why we have our OP variable. So for all of these cases, we'll take our operator and we'll put it into our OP variable. Next, we want to zero out our value string and then we'll take whatever's in our display string and we want to turn it into a double and then push it into our previous value. And we're doing this so that the first number that we put into the calculator will get saved behind the scenes. And then after this, we can call the set state function. And because we want to show the operator character on screen, we take our input string as a string and we add the key value to it and then we put it back into our input string. And this will update our display so that we can actually see the operator that the user pushed. And of course, after this case, we want to 
break out of this function. All right, so for now, I'm just going to put break after our equals case, and then we will handle the user putting in numbers. So when the user hits the default case, we want to check to see that the key value is a number. And we also want to check to see if our operator is not equal to null. Because if our operator is equal to null, then that means the user has already put an operator into that value. If the operator is not null, then we can make it so that the user can keep adding numbers to the number. So for instance, if we come into our calculator here, if I put five and then I click five and then I click five, it will keep stacking fives next to one another. If I click multiply and then I put nine, 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 as long as I'm still typing in numbers, it's not going to resolve this calculation. And that is the actual functionality that we've added here. If there's already an operator in there, then we just want the user to be able to keep appending numbers to our input string. We also want to be able to save whatever the user is typing in to the key value into our value string. So we do the same thing that we're doing with our input string where we're just concatenating the key value onto the current input string and we're taking our value and concatenating the current key value onto that value. Next we're going to have two else clauses. One of them is going to call this function recursively. So if for some reason the user puts in a value that isn't caught by any of these cases and isn't a number, then we want to pass it back through the case values. For the other else, we just want to take operator and we want to set it equal to Z. And we're doing this so that this check doesn't come back as null while the user is typing in a value. So if you consider this calculator here, currently there's no operator that the user has put into this calculator, but we're able to type in numbers. If we didn't have the operator as a value, like Z for instance, then in our calculator, we wouldn't be able to type in numbers until we've pushed a operator. Okay, so now let's wire our onPressed function onto our buttons. Inside of the build function, we can create a new final main state by calling main state of, and this will give us the singleton object for this main state class. And then we can come down to our on pressed here and we can just put in main state dot on pressed and then pass in key value, which is the text value on the actual button. I forgot to come up to the build function for our calc state class and put in the on pressed function for the on press function so that it's being fed into our inherited widget. Now we can actually type in values. So I can type in 14 minus six, and if I hit equals, this will do nothing. I can type in more numbers here. If I try to put in another operator, this obviously doesn't work. And I can hit the clear button, which will clear the screen. All right, so now let's talk about how to deal with the case class where the user hits the equals sign. So first we want to check to see that the operator is not equal to null. Otherwise there will be nothing to add or multiply together. And then we're going to take this entire thing inside of here and call the set state function on it. And inside of this set state function, we want to call the switch function on our operator. And the cases for this switch function will just be our multiply case, our add case, our subtract case, and our divide case. So for each of our cases, we want to take our operator, which in this case is multiply, and multiply previous value by double dot parse value, and then convert it into a string as fixed, which means it won't have a decimal point, and then pass it back into our input string. For divide, we're going to make it so that our string has two decimal points, so we'll make it string as fixed two. And then after our set state function finishes and after the switch statement finishes, we want to take and we want to take our operator, set it equal to null, then take the previous value and set it equal to double dot parse input string so that we can save the value that's currently in our display. And then we'll take our value and we'll set it equal to an empty string. So now we can take a look at how this functions. If I put in five and I click plus and then I put in three and I click equal, now we get eight. And I can multiply eight by two and this should give us 16. 
And if I subtract six, this should give us 10. And if I divide this by say three, this should give us 3.33. So this seems to be working, but there is a slight issue. And that is if we start typing in another number. So for instance, we have this dot three, three, that was the result of our last operator. If we start typing in say six to try to multiply six by nine, this will just append six on the end of 3.33. And then when we multiply it together, it's 3.336 times nine, which is not the functionality that we want. We can resolve this by coming down into this else block here. And we can say, okay, we want the input string to equal an empty string plus the key value. And the reason why this will fix the issue is because when the operator is null, this means that we've just executed an equals or we've cleared the screen. In this case, we just want to take the key value if it's a number and then pass it into our input string. So here I can click clear and then I can start typing in numbers. So 963 times two hit equals. And then if I start typing in numbers again, say five one, it clears the screen naturally, lets me type in 51. And now I can multiply 51 times three and we actually get the value of that operation. Now that's it for the logic of our calculator, but there is a minor thing that I want to change about the layout. And that is to come up into our display widget and inside of the row, let's change the main axis alignment so that our numbers start at the end of the display box. So they sit on the right side of the display box. So we put in main axis alignment end. And you can see here now the numbers are at the far right. And as we add numbers in, they start to increment forward to the left. All right, guys, well, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.